Hey designers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can create this animated map using Figma and After Effects. Let's dive right in and get started. All right, so jumping into Figma, what we need to create is a frame with our map and the rest of the UI elements present. You can go ahead and grab the design that I'll be using for this tutorial using the link in the description below for the community file in Figma. Inside the community file, if you come to the follow along page, you'll see that I've already created a base design for you to use. You can go ahead and create your own design for whatever requirement that you may have. What we need to do next is to add a map to this frame. To do that, hit shift I on your keyboard to open the resources panel and go to the plugins tab. Here we can type in fake map and open the Figma plugin. Here you'll see that you will be able to search for any particular location that you want to create a map of. So I'll just go ahead and type in Berlin. And you also have support for changing the style of the map. So I'll go ahead and select a dark theme. You can go ahead and explore the other themes that are present as well. Also, this plugin allows you to use custom styles using Mapbox, but I'll not dive into that. You can go ahead and explore that in case you want to. Jumping back to Mapbox style, selecting dark, I can change the zoom level to a particular level, which I find nice. So I'll go ahead and type in 9.5, uh, change the pitch. This will help you rotate the map a little bit in sort of a 3D way and the bearing which will just rotate the map in the traditional sense. I'll go ahead and change this back to zero and then we can go ahead and export this. I'll select the add 2x option because I want the image to be high quality and then hit the draw map to Figma button. What this will do is export an image that you can place inside of your frame. So I'll go ahead and add that to my map frame and place it according to where I want my map to be. Something like that works. Now to draw the directions on this map, what I'll go ahead and do is select the pen tool and then start tracing one of these paths. This can take you a little while to do in case you're drawing a long path. So my recommendation would be to just do a smaller one and I can change the stroke color to be the brand color that I'm using and change the stroke width to about two. If I go back to my original design, you'll be able to see that part of the stroke was dashed and part of the stroke was filled. The filled part basically showed that this driver has already covered this distance and the dashed part shows that the driver is yet to cover that distance. So if I go back to my follow along page, I can draw another stroke, which obviously follows the road. And in the advanced stroke settings, I'll set the stroke style to dash and change the dash cap to round and increase the amount to maybe six or yeah six looks good now to signify where the driver is currently i can go ahead and drop this current location part that i've already created into our map this basically shows that the driver is currently present here and i can take the final location pin and drop it where our stroke ends and that's it that is basically what you want to do inside of Figma. Let's go ahead and export some specific layers to bring them into After Effects. Now, I'll be exporting these layers as PNGs, but you can go ahead and use plugins like AEUX to get them as proper vectors inside of After Effects. The layers that we'll be exporting is just this tracking page with the map added, but without any parts that we had just created. So make sure that you delete the parts before you export this layer. I'll export them at 2x, but you can go ahead and select a different size depending on your needs. All right, jumping into After Effects, I've already imported my two PNGs that I exported. I'll go ahead and select this particular tracking page PNG and drop it on the create a composition icon that will go ahead and create a composition. And I'll also import this location PNG and I'll just turn it off. Now we need to create the path for the directions that we had already created inside of Figma once again in After Effects. So I'll go ahead and select the pen tool, make sure that none of my layers are selected and then just zoom in and start creating a path. Make sure that you're creating this inside of a shape layer. This will get automatically created once you tap anywhere and start creating a path. So I'll go ahead and do that.
Now while I'm creating the path, this fill is getting a little annoying. So I'll go ahead and select fill and select it to none. Hit OK. This will remove the fill. And if I want, I can go ahead and add a stroke as well. So I'll just leave it at the color that it is and make sure that the stroke is at four. You can change the color by tapping here and then changing it to the particular stroke that we had added in Figma. Let's go ahead and continue creating a path. Now this is where I want my driver to be. So ahead of this, I'll go ahead and create a separate path. But for now, let's go ahead and finish here. Let me select the move tool again. And let's go ahead and expand this shape layer. Expand the contents, shape one, and then go ahead and add a trim paths here. What trim paths helps us do is help create an animated effect where we start the path from one place and end it in another. So let's go ahead and open this. Now you can see this in action. If I go ahead and change the start point to something like that, you can see that some of the path is now cut off. So we can go ahead and set both start and end to zero, create a keyframe for the end percent, move forward a few frames, and then increase this to 100. We can also select both of these keyframes and hit F9 to make them easy ease. We can see our effect in action here. Alright, so some of our path has animated. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the path as well. Let's go ahead and skip forward and add a separate shape layer. Make sure that this does not match shape layer 1 and go ahead and create a path. And hit enter. This is where I want my driver to end. So I'll go ahead, go to contents, shape one, stroke one, and add dashes. As you can see, dashes show the path that is yet to be covered by the driver. I can go ahead and play around with these settings to make the dashes look the way that I want. Now let's go ahead and add a trim path to this as well and set both start and end to 0%. Now I'll go ahead and skip to the part where my first shape layer ends so this is where it ends and keyframe the end percent of my second shape layer skip forward a few frames and then change it to 100 percent you can go ahead and see this in action now there's the first path and then the second path let's go ahead and add our location marker let's go ahead and place it where your path ends so somewhere about that and then I would want this to just stand up so I'll go ahead and open the position by hitting P scale by hitting shift S and rotation by hitting shift R so now that I have these three I'll go ahead and move a few frames before my path ends keyframe all three of these move a few frames forward keyframe them again and then go back to my first keyframes and then start changing them so first thing I would want to do is add a rotation, a little bit of a negative rotation, place it back where it's supposed to end, let's scale it down to 0% and move this where it's supposed to end. Somewhere about there. Let's go ahead and see it in action again. Great. So let's change the timings of it a little bit so that it looks a little more smoother. Somewhere about there. And obviously make all of these keyframes easy ease. Perfect. Let's go ahead and add a final touch to show where our driver currently is. So I'll go ahead and create a new shape layer using the ellipse tool. Hold down command and shift to start the circle exactly where you're pointing. Let's go ahead and remove the stroke from here. So I'll select the stroke and set it to none. Then go ahead and add a fill, hit OK. Now I would want this ellipse to just scale up as soon as this line is drawn, so right about there. So I'll go ahead and add that using the transform properties of the ellipse. Let's go ahead and select scale here. So this is about my end state. I'll just go a few frames back, set the scale to 0 and let's see it in action. Right, so this is done. Let's go ahead and add a pulsing effect outside of this ellipse. So I'll go ahead and duplicate ellipse one. 
now i'll select ellipse 2 and go to the transform properties as soon as ellipse 1 scales up to 100 percent i would want ellipse 2 to be even larger so i'll go ahead and increase the size and also animate the opacity so i'll go back and change the opacity in the first keyframe to zero percent and on the second keyframe i'll go ahead and change it to let's say about 50 percent and i would want to scale this up and reduce the opacity even more so i'll go ahead and change it to zero percent and increase the scale to let's say 200 percent what this will do is make sure that this pulses and goes out so to continue doing this pulsing effect i'll go to shape layer 3 hit u to just show the exact keyframes select ellipse 2 keyframes command c to copy them and then just move forward in time and paste them again and again so that this keeps on pulsing let's go ahead and take a look at our final animation now this is obviously very fast so I'll go ahead and select all of them, hold down option and then increase the time between them. Let's play this again. Perfect. And there you go. You've just created an animated map using Figma and After Effects. Make sure to check out the community file down in the description. Thanks a ton for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe for more design insights. Until next time, happy designing.